بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وتعالى وبركاته I'm going to discuss about the larva migrants in this class the larva migrants is uh, also known as the wandering larva these are basically animal nematode which are found in the human and human is considered as a wrong host that is why this larva in the human cannot be developed to adult and the larva actually results in aborted growth eventually it die and produces the clinical manifestations in the human there are two types of larva migrants or wandering larva one infects or affects the cutaneous tissue of human we call the cutaneous larva migrants and the other affects the viscera or internal organ we designate as visceral larva migrants so the lesions which are produced by cutaneous larva migrants are basically dermatitis or inflammation of the skin on the other hand the lesions which are produced in the internal organ or viscera by the visceral larva migrants are manifested by granuloma which you know that as chronic inflammation so let us give the example of cutaneous larva migrants and visceral larva migrants uh, on the first place you have to know that the cutaneous larva migrants is has got the similarity and equivalence with the hookworm and the hookworm you know that it is called ankylostoma and since uh, the usual host for this uh, nematode are the animal so accordingly the human are the accidental host but animal is the definitive host so in case of cutaneous larva migraines the ankylostoma is the genus and there are different species according to their definitive host like for example if it is a dog ankylostoma then it's called ankylostoma caninum if it is a cat then ankylostoma siloninum or again there may be another uh, species of ankylostoma found in the cat ankylostoma malayanum and also you can find some species in the sheep as well on the other hand the visceral larva migraines are equivalent to the roundworm or, or ascaris and again according to the definitive host the different animals the name of the visceral larva migraines are different like the toxocara canis found in the dog toxocara catti in the cat then angiostrongylus cantonensis found in many animals nasostoma spinigerum pounds in cats and other carnivores then anisakis marina as the name suggests marina so it is found in the marine animals like whales then capillaria philippinensis philippinensis found in the birds and other wild rats and monkeys and capillaria hepatica is found in the rat now the larva migrants what happens normally that the animal are the definitive host and the larva develops into adult in the animal and their cycle is continuing in the animal but when they choose the abnormal host like the human the larva cannot be matured to adult rather it remains as a larva in the cutaneous or visceral organs and eventually uh, the larva die and produces the human lesions or the disease now let us consider the cutaneous larva migrants first then we shall consider the visceral larva now the migration of animal nematode larva to human is because of the close contact of the human with the animals and as i have told already that the animal hookworms are the main agent to cause cutaneous larva migrants and the very best example is the ankylostoma caninum or ankylostoma silonicum which comes from the dog and the cat respectively and as you know that the hookworm usually infects the human through the skin penetration of the larva we call the filariform larva and during the penetration of the skin the larva can produces the 
dermatitis and the dermatitis at the site of entrance of the larva has got many synonym like the ground itch, creeping eruption, sand worm or plumbers itch and what happens basically that this in the animal this uh, animal hookworms like Enclostoma caninum or synonym they remain in the small intestine of the cats and dog and they pass the you know the uh, egg containing the larva in the exterior environment and that larva develops in the soil and they become infective in infective form and uh, penetrate the uh, animal for their uh, life cycle to be continued but accidentally if this larva penetrate the human skin then the question of larva migrants arises and human get contaminated with the animal feces and the feces contains the egg containing the larva and eventually that larva penetrate that human skin to produce the cutaneous larva migrants. Let us take this example who actually suffers from usually the children with the barefooted because they penetrate through the skin and it can be any part of the body uh, and you can see this uh, bitch which uh, you know the cat they can pass the feces containing the egg and the egg will mature into larva in the beaches and if it is contaminated during the play plan of the ch children especially they can get infected now what symptoms usually produces by the cutaneous larva migrants the first of all the creeping eruption or, or the ankylostom dermatitis which produces the intense itching and there will be erythematous tunnel under the skin and of course you will find the high eosinophil count in the blood and it is prone to secondary bacterial infections now what is the treatment usually it is self-limiting with course of time because within five weeks usually the worm die and you get the remission of your symptoms so this is the typical presentation of creeping eruption or dermatitis uh, but eventually, don't be panic. It will be resolved with time, inshallah. Now, let us consider the visceral larva migrants. And you can see different animal picture here. You know, this puppies, this rat, this cat, the whale in the marine animal, and the fishes and the others. So, all these animals are actually the reservoir host for this visceral larva migrants which are basically the roundworm or ascaris infection of this animal and can get accidentally to human to cause the visceral larva migrants and the main clinical manifestations is the granuloma formation because of the dead larva. Now let us first consider the toxocariasis and the toxocariasis can be caused by toxocara canis or toxocara cati a uh, toxocara canis is basically the dog roundworm and the toxocara catty is cat's roundworm but human act as a dead end host because the larva cannot be developed further if it infect the human rather the larva will die and produces the visceral granuloma in the affected organ so the normal si life cycle of the ascaris lambricoides is quite similar in case of uh, the dog or cat ascaris like the human ascaris lumbricordis infection you see the small intestine of the cat and dog they harbor the adult worm and the adult one passes the eggs which ripens in the environment and the egg containing the larva if it is ingested by the dog or cat eventually it develops into the adult worm in the small intestine after having a life cycle through the lungs but what happens in case of human if they come in contact with the animal feces containing the egg and that egg uh, if is ingested by the human eventually it develops to the larva and that the larva migrate to different visceral organs like the liver or from the liver to other organs and the larva dies producing the granuloma now this toxicariasis uh, is most commonly found in the eye but it can be to other organ as well and 
it produces symptoms of allergic reactions, sometimes asthma-like reactions, like you know that ascaris can produce the low flush syndromes that we have discussed. Similar lesions can also be found here, and there will be eosinophilic granuloma in the affected organ. As a result, you can expect the high eosinophil count in the blood, and the treatment is again on the clinical ground, but anti helminthic drug like thiabendazole will help. And there is a high seropositivity in Malaysian population because somehow Malaysian populations are infected with this in a genotic nematode ascaris and they have developed uh, this uh, antibody uh, out of this infection so they are seropositive. Let us consider the life cycle of the Toxicara canis which is the dog uh, roundworm and the adult worm resides in the dog's small intestine. The eggs are passed in the stool and the eggs needs environment for its further development and eventually in the external environment the embryonated egg containing the larva is developed. And if that egg is ingested by the susceptible host, the life cycle is continued with the same host. But this egg can also be accidentally ingested by some of the, you know, uh, paratonic host like this uh, rabies, rabbit or accidentally by the human, especially the children during their, you know, contamination of eggs with the food and drinks. And if it happens, then the larva will develop in this small time and from there it penetrates the muscle to be carried out to the liver and other organs and it can be distributed to different viscera to produce the granuloma or granulomatous lesion. Sometimes this, uh, the, this uh, animal they can transmit the larva through the placenta or trans memory trans, uh, you know, transfer to the in utero puppies and if these puppies are infected you know they are more prone to pass the eggs in the exterior and continue the life cycle. This, this is the description of the life cycle that we have just described and you can go through it for further details. Uh, and the larva can be transmitted to different organs by the circulation like the liver, heart, lungs, brain, muscles, eyes and accordingly they will produce as the granulometrous lesion of this affected organ in the human. Here there is a degenerative larva in the eye we call the ocular larva migraines through fundoscopic examination you can detect that. Then let us consider the anisarchiasis. The anisarchiasis is the disease which is caused by anisakis marina. So this is basically a ascaris infection of the sea fish and marine animals. And this is reported from the Japan, Europe and USA where it is called the herring disease and human, especially the fisherman who has got the habit of eating raw fish or marine mammals are at particular risk of developing these visceral larva migraines uh, caused by the anicasis, anica, uh, anisa, anisakis marina. And it produces the snorphic granuloma as a reaction, and it also produces the symptoms of abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and also allergic reactions. And treatment is also symptomatic, or sometimes surgical removal of the worm if you uh, see the granulomatous lesion affecting different organs. Now how can we prevent that? By cooking fish properly and also other seafoods because if somebody takes it raw then there is a chance of accidental infection by this Anisakis marina. Here is the life cycle of the Anisakis marina. You see the uh, marine animals like the whale, they or big fish, they pass the unembryonated egg in the 
through the, uh, the excrete the animal neck that comes in the water and the eggs uh, the embryo inside the eggs develop further and it liberates the you know uh, L2 larva or the you know type 2 larva and which becomes the free swimming this type 2 larva is eaten by these crustaceans present in the water and this crustacean give rise to the L3 mature larva this L3 larva containing in the crustaceans if this crustacean is eaten by another fish then this fish become infected with the L3 larva and eventually the small fish can be taken by the eaten by the big fish or sometimes raw by the human especially the fishermen in some of the countries that we have mentioned and eventually the life cycle continues with the marine you know, animal and fish but human is the dead accidental host and human can give rise to the granuloma so the description of the life cycle is furnished here for for the details you can go through it and next is the nathostomiasis so this is another visceral larva migrants which is caused by nathostoma spinigerum but there are few other species as well and this is distributed basically to japan and thailand and again the human infection is caused by eating raw marinated fish birds and sometimes reptiles and it can produce the granular solution as, as usual uh, sometimes to the face or allergic manifestations the diagnosis obvious clinical picture like edematous face and high eosinophil count again treatment is symptomatic and sometimes surgical removal from the granulomatous lesion and the control is by cooking fish or avoiding these you know taking marinated fish birds or reptiles and the life cycle is very simple although you see a lot of animal search you know because uh, this is basically a genotic disease so for example the reservoir host could be the cat the dog even the pig so the nethostoma you know spirigerum or other species uh, the adult worm research in the these animals any of these animals the eggs are passes which are unembryonated in the water they become embryonated and the egg contains the l1 larva which is eaten by the crustaceans the first intermediate host and the larva develops to l2 larva and these crustaceans or copepods are eaten by the second intermediate host which could be the fish or the frog and they develop the l3 larva so if this fish and frogs are eaten by this you know reservoir host the life cycle continues or alternatively this l3 larva can be taken by some paratonic host there will be no further development but the larva will remain you know static in the paratonic host and if this paratonic host is eaten by the reservoir host then the life cycle also can be continued the human gets infected by eating you know raw or undercooked fish or this you know crustaceans or the frogs sometimes and they develop the nathostomiasis in different organs like the cutaneous the ocular visceral and sometimes brain they produce neurological nathostomiasis and again the details of the life cycle that we have just described and this is the clinical presentation of the nathostomiasis you can see the edematous face the other one is the angiostrongylosis strongyliosis and you can see the picture of the rat so this uh, angylos angylostrongyliosis is caused by angylostrongylias cantonensis and you can see the picture of the snail and the rat rodent so what happens this is distributed in the indonesia Philippines, Thailand, and also some cases are found in Sarawak, which is especially called the Angiostrongylus malayensis because uh, it is in Malaysia. So adult worm in the animal, like rodent, they remain in the lungs. And human infection results from eating raw snails or crab. 
because in some uh, area you know that the eating of raw snails or crab is a custom and again it can result in eosinophilic meningitis migration to the brain and diagnosis is clinical picture or high eosinophilia symptomatic treatment and the control is by cooking snail or crab so the life cycle is uh, in one animal the adult worm lives in the lungs of the rodent they pass the infective larva in the feces which is taken by the mollusk or the snail and this uh, snail then give rise to the l3 larva which is uh, repeating the life cycle if it is this snail is you know eaten by this uh, rodent and the larva migrates to the lungs and becomes the adult one but the human infection is starts with this you know eating the snail or crab or squids and the young worm migrate to the viscera like the eye or brain and eventually they die to produce the pathological lesions so this is the life cycle that i have described the other visceral larva migrants is the intestinal capillariasis so this is caused by capillaria philippinensis as the name suggests this is a uh, larva migrants which is common in philippines and thailand and human infection is eating from undercooked fish again or infected birds or wild rat monkeys etc the worm live in the mucosa of the small intestine in case of man and also in this animal so if it is in the small intestine the symptoms could be abdominal pain or diarrhea and this could be serious that sometimes patient may die in 25% cases without treatment so diagnosis is basically by biopsy of the small intestine on sometimes looking for the eggs and the egg resembles the ascaris ascaris uh, the the trichuris trichuris egg you see the trichuris trichura is bile stained and there is a polar plaque on both the sides so it resembles like that you can treat with the mebendazole or albendazole and control is again by avoiding the raw fish this is the life cycle you see the human passes the egg which is unembryonated like the ascaris lambricoides or trichuris trichuria eggs become embryonated if it is taken by the fish the fish become infected and if that fish is taken by this bird which is the natural reservoir host the bird become infected and the cycle repeats this is the primary cycle but if the fish is taken under cook or raw by the human and then the larva can uh, become adult in the human and eventually the fish in the, in, in the human the female can give rise to the egg and uh, this passes and the cycle continues but uh, the problem is that sometimes like the uh, other nematode infection in human like the uh, the, the pinworm infection or the strong gyloidosis uh, this could be auto infection in human and what happens in auto infection that the female can lay egg in the human intestine the egg can give rise to the larvae and that larvae can becomes adult in the human so it the cycle repeats within the same host and that is uh, the more serious condition with the capillaria philippinensis that it can give rise to auto infection sometimes in human so this is the life cycle and the last one is the capillaria hepatica which can give rise to hepatic capillaries so this is the rat liver adult worm and the rat is the reservoir or definitive host and the adult worm resides in the liver the egg surfaces in the feces but not in the infected rat but if the infected rat are eaten by the carnivores or predators so they can pass this predator or carnivore which ate the infected rat containing the adult worm or eggs in their liver so they can pass this predator can pass the egg in their feces and in case of human it is fecal oral because if human come in contact with this animal feces containing the egg human get infected and it can produce the hepatitis so it can uh, get the larva from the biopsy tissue so this is our trichuris trichuria over with polar egg very typical 
and this also resembles capillary hepatica with this trichuris trichuria so this is the uh, life cycle you see the life cycle is within the rat in the liver the eggs and the adult worm in the liver of the rat and if that rat uh, passes the uh, unembryonic egg from the death and decomposition but normally it doesn't pass but if the rat uh, died and decomposed then this egg can be released from the death uh, dead and decomposed rat and the usual way that when these rats are eaten by the you know predators like this uh, dog or jackal then they actually release the egg through their feces and the life cycle continues so this is a description of the life cycle and uh, thank you very much for your patience i have given an example of so many visceral larva migrants and this is quite similar with the Ascaris lumbricoides life cycle and there is a lot of animal reservoir host but human can be accidental host and most of the cases the larva produces the granuloma but sometimes in one or two cases like the capillaria philippinensis the adult worm also can live in the small intestine of the human and can produce the lesions thank you very much